Imagine a world where the dominance of the dollar is no longer a certainty, where the financial landscape reshapes right before our eyes, challenging a system that has held power for nearly a century. With each subtle move, the BRICS alliance signals a quiet revolution. It's no longer just an idea whispered in closed-door meetings. Today, it's a concept taking tangible form, a vision captured in a meticulously crafted commemorative note. But this note isn't just currency, it's a message. At the recent Kazan summit, BRICS leaders orchestrated a masterclass in diplomatic symbolism, one that echoes through every decision surrounding this initiative. By presenting this note to Russia, a nation deeply entangled in sanctions and economic isolation, BRICS has made a deliberate choice. This is a signal to the world, a declaration of economic sovereignty, and a commitment to a financial system beyond Western influence. Let me break down the profound significance of these recent developments in the BRICS Alliance's monetary initiatives. This isn't just about a commemorative note, it's about understanding the deeper geopolitical symbolism and strategic messaging at play. First, let's contextualize the timing. The BRICS currency discussion hasn't emerged in a vacuum. It's been carefully cultivated over several years. What makes this particular moment crucial is the Alliance's deliberate choice to materialize this concept through physical currency at the Kazan summit. This isn't coincidental, it's a calculated diplomatic signal. The presentation of this note to Putin, as BRICS chair, carries multi-layered significance. By choosing Russia, currently under Western sanctions, as the recipient, BRICS is sending a clear message about economic sovereignty and alternative financial systems. The production of exactly 1,000 notes, not too many to seem presumptuous, not too few to be dismissed as trivial, shows careful calibration of the diplomatic messaging. The location of production, Kirik in the Vladimir region, is particularly noteworthy. This choice of a Russian town, rather than a major financial center, symbolizes BRICS' dedication to decentralizing global financial power. When the Kremlin spokesperson termed it quasar money, this careful linguistic choice maintained plausible deniability while acknowledging the note's potential future implications. The design elements are where the geopolitical symbolism becomes most evident. The front-facing presentation of the founding members' symbols demonstrates the original power structure, while the reverse side featuring Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and the UAE reveals BRICS expansion strategy. This isn't just artistic choice, it's strategic visualization of the alliance's growth trajectory. The meticulous hand-drawing of illustrations isn't merely aesthetic. It's a statement about authenticity and craftsmanship in an era of digital currency discussions. The choice of Yuri Yakov as designer is particularly significant. His experience with 10 different national currencies brings legitimacy and expertise to what could otherwise be dismissed as a mere symbolic gesture. In essence, what we're witnessing isn't just the creation of a commemorative note, it's a carefully orchestrated geopolitical statement about the future of global finance. Each aspect, from production to presentation, has been precisely calculated to signal BRICS' serious intentions while maintaining diplomatic flexibility. This development could be viewed as the Alliance's first tangible step toward challenging the current dollar-dominated financial system, while carefully avoiding any direct confrontation. It's a masterclass in diplomatic symbolism and strategic messaging in the complex world of international relations. The rise and fall of dollar dominance, from Bretton Woods to BRICS revolution. When delegates from 44 nations gathered in the quiet town of Bretton Woods, New Hampshire in 1944, they were about to reshape the global financial landscape for generations to come. As the smoke of World War II began to clear, these architects of the new financial order established a system that would place the American dollar at the center of global finance. Every dollar would be anchored to gold at precisely $35 per ounce, a foundation of stability that the war-torn world desperately needed. To safeguard this new financial order, two powerful institutions emerged from the Bretton Woods Conference. The International Monetary Fund IMF stood ready as the world's financial firefighter, prepared to douse any monetary crisis that might threaten global stability. Alongside it, the World Bank emerged as a global development powerhouse, tasked with rebuilding shattered economies and funding the march of progress across the developing world. For nearly three decades, this system provided the framework for unprecedented global economic growth. But by 1971, the strains were showing. In a moment that would later be known as the Nixon shock, President Richard Nixon severed the golden anchor of the dollar. The era of faith-based currency had begun, with the dollar now floating freely, 
backed only by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Yet as the sun began to set on this American-centered financial system, new economic powers were rising in the East and South. The BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, emerged as a force that would challenge the very foundations of the post-war economic order. Today, their combined economic might, measured in purchasing power parity, exceeds that of the traditional G7 powerhouse economies. This isn't just a statistical curiosity, it represents a fundamental shift in global economic gravity. Consider the sheer scale of what BRICS represents today. 31% of global GDP flows through their economies, while 16% of global trade crosses their borders. Perhaps most strikingly, 40% of humanity calls BRICS nations home. This isn't just about numbers, it's about the unprecedented concentration of human capital, economic potential, and market power. But the BRICS nations aren't content to simply grow within the existing system. They're actively reshaping it. When China and Brazil established direct currency trading mechanisms, they weren't just creating a new financial channel. They were bypassing the dollar-dominated system entirely. Russia and India followed suit, establishing their own local currency trade arrangements. These aren't mere technical adjustments. They represent a conscious effort to create alternative financial architectures. This transformation represents more than just the rise of new economic powers. It signals the emergence of a truly multipolar financial world. The system born at Bretton Woods served its purpose, providing stability in a post-war world. But as we approach the century mark since that historic conference, we are witnessing the birth of a new economic order. One where emerging markets aren't just participants but architects of the global financial system. The speed of this transformation is unprecedented in financial history. In less than a human lifetime, we've moved from a world where the dollar reigns supreme to one where alternative financial systems are not just possible but increasingly prevalent. The BRICS nations aren't just growing within the existing system, they're creating their own parallel financial universe. As we watch this financial revolution unfold, one thing becomes clear. The world of 2024 is vastly different from the one imagined by those delegates at Bretton Woods. The era of unquestioned dollar dominance is giving way to a new financial order, one where power is distributed more evenly across the globe, and where the future of finance is being written not just in New York and London, but in Beijing, Moscow, New Delhi, Brasilia, and Pretoria. BRICS nations have recently embarked on a transformative journey by exploring the development of a digital currency unit, signaling a shift in the global financial landscape. This digital currency project aims to streamline trade and financial exchanges among BRICS countries, potentially decreasing dependence on the US dollar. To ensure stability and acceptance, BRICS is considering the creation of this digital currency with a framework similar to the International Monetary Fund Special Drawing Rights SDR. This approach would use a weighted basket of currencies, possibly including the BRICS members' currencies, to create a stable, shared valuation that reflects their combined economic strength and reduces individual currency fluctuations. Within the BRICS bloc, there is also a lively debate on whether this digital currency should be backed by gold to reinforce stability or remain more flexible, similar to other major currencies. A gold-backed currency could boost credibility and attract wider acceptance in global markets, particularly in times of economic volatility. However, Others argue that a flexible currency offers greater adaptability, particularly as BRICS economies are diverse and may require policy flexibility that a gold standard could restrict. Russia's exclusion from the SWIFT banking system due to sanctions has pushed BRICS nations to seek alternative financial pathways. This experience has been a wake-up call for many within BRICS, underscoring the need for a payment system that operates independently of Western-controlled financial structures. The impact of sanctions against Russia has also added urgency to BRICS's de-dollarization efforts, with leaders actively working to reduce reliance on the US dollar in cross-border transactions. By diversifying away from dollar dependence, BRICS nations aim to avoid the geopolitical risks associated with the dollar's dominance. Another advantage of a shared digital currency would be reducing the costs of cross-border trade, as it would eliminate the need for currency conversions within the BRICS trade network. For instance, Brazilian businesses trading with China or India could complete transactions without going through the US dollar, saving on conversion fees and enhancing efficiency. This aligns with BRICS's broader vision of a multipolar financial system, 
one that balances the power of multiple currencies and financial institutions rather than relying solely on Western-centric systems. Moreover, the focus on using local currencies for trade between BRICS members would significantly lower exchange rate risks, as transactions would no longer rely on the fluctuating dollar. This change is essential for fostering a resilient financial network that can withstand global market volatility and maintain stability for BRICS economies. However, BRICS countries are not immune to the influences of U.S. Federal Reserve decisions. Rate hikes by the Fed can ripple across the world, impacting borrowing costs and investment flows. For BRICS, rising U.S. interest rates typically lead to increased debt servicing costs, as many BRICS nations hold dollar-denominated debt. This makes the BRICS push toward the dollarization and financial independence not only a strategic ambition, but also a protective measure against adverse external shocks. The proposed BRICS clear system represents an ambitious step for BRICS nations to rival Western financial clearing and settlement giants, particularly Euroclear and Clearstream. This new system, designed as an alternative to these entrenched Western networks, aims to enhance financial autonomy for BRICS countries and reduce dependency on the Western financial system. The BRICS Clear proposal leverages distributed ledger technology DLT, a decentralized data sharing framework that allows secure, transparent, and efficient data management across global transactions. By adopting DLT, BRICS countries hope to establish a more secure, real-time alternative to traditional clearing houses, allowing for direct, verifiable transactions with minimal intermediaries. An additional draw of the BRICS Clear system is its potential to significantly boost trade among BRICS countries. Initial estimates suggest that implementing this system could increase inter-BRICS trade volumes by 5-7%, to offering a substantial economic incentive for adoption. The integration of BRICS Clear would simplify cross-border trade within BRICS and lower transaction costs, encouraging businesses to expand their international reach within the coalition. Technical discussions scheduled for December indicate that this proposal is advancing, though it still faces considerable implementation challenges. Differing regulatory standards, financial protocols, and security frameworks within BRICS nations must be harmonized to make BRICS clear functional across borders. Achieving this alignment will require extensive negotiation and technical coordination. China's leadership in establishing the cross-border interbank payment system SIPs highlights how BRICS countries are developing their own frameworks to support financial independence. SIPs, already an operational system facilitating yuan-based transactions globally, showcases a working model of interbank payments outside the Western framework. Its success could inform the implementation strategies for BRICS Clear, underscoring China's growing influence in reshaping the global financial landscape. The development of BRICS Clear is also part of a larger wave of South-South cooperation, where countries in the Global South are strengthening ties to foster shared prosperity and mutual support. This cooperation aligns with the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, which dovetails with BRICS objectives to establish infrastructure that supports seamless trade and development across Asia, Africa, and beyond. Additionally, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization's alignment with BRICS goals reveals a trend of geopolitical consolidation. Both organizations share objectives in fostering economic development and security among member states, providing fertile ground for collaborative financial infrastructure that could redefine how emerging economies interact financially on a global scale. Through BRICS Clear and its complementary projects, BRICS is striving to reshape financial independence for emerging economies, challenging the traditional dominance of Western financial systems and laying the groundwork for a multipolar financial world. Distributed ledger technology DLT is transforming how records are kept, leveraging decentralization to secure data without relying on a central authority. Unlike traditional databases, DLT utilizes a decentralized network where each participant maintains a synchronized copy of records, significantly enhancing security and resilience. This system uses advanced cryptographic techniques, making data highly secure by ensuring that only authorized parties can access and verify information. One of the hallmarks of DLT is its consensus-based verification, where network participants must agree on the validity of transactions, further safeguarding against unauthorized changes. Another defining feature of DLT is its immutability. Once data is recorded, it cannot be altered, providing an unbreakable chain of trust. This immutability makes it ideal for applications demanding a high level of transparency. 
DLT allows participants to observe and verify records independently, enhancing transparency and reducing opportunities for fraud. Additionally, DLT is not limited to a single form. There are multiple variations, each tailored to different needs. Blockchain is the most widely known type of DLT, popularized by its use in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. DLT also opens doors to smart contracts, enabling automated agreements that execute once predefined conditions are met. This capability is especially beneficial in fields like supply chain management, where it can automate complex transactions and ensure each step is verified and traceable. Another application is in cross-border transactions, where DLT can simplify and secure payments by removing intermediaries, reducing costs, and shortening processing times. Recently, Russia's finance minister acknowledged the potential for DLT integration in financial systems. However, skepticism remains, with Russian official Oleg Vian expressing doubts about achieving a unified system. He highlighted that Russia's ties with Western economies might hinder complete DLT adoption, especially in light of regulatory and technical challenges. A lack of standardized regulations across countries presents another significant barrier. Additionally, the varying legal frameworks between jurisdictions could prevent seamless integration, leading Russia to consider only partial adoption. In a related financial initiative, anti-counterfeiting measures were introduced into a new commemorative note, a project driven by Kirik Typography JSC's owner. While some speculated this could be a step toward shared digital currency, President Putin clarified that no immediate plans for such a currency exist, focusing instead on strengthening existing financial systems. The path forward will be complex, demanding extensive negotiation, alignment, and continued adaptation. But as BRICS continues to assert itself on the world stage, one thing is certain, the alliance is challenging long-held assumptions about global finance and redefining the rules of engagement. The future of finance, it seems, will be written not by any one nation or currency but by a diverse coalition determined to secure its own place in the world economy. And with each move, BRICS edges closer to this ambitious vision, inviting the world to imagine a future where financial power is shared, not concentrated.